Hey, we've got a great show for you today. We're talking about the smart investor. So if you've ever thought of investing in real estate or you know somebody or a family member that's considering investing in real estate, this is the show to listen to. So if they're thinking of it, you might want to Facebook them right now or text message them or email them or pick up the old fashioned telephone and dial them. Although they don't dial anymore, they push buttons, right? Well, and if you're driving, maybe pull over first. Yes, if you're driving, don't do this. <laughs> if you're driving, just turn up the radio a little louder and listen in. And if you're, don't take notes either if you're driving, because we will post it. It will be on chri.ca and it will be on YouTube forward slash Decker Team if you want to watch or listen to the show as a replay. So I'm Ken Decker. I'm Ryan Decker. And today we are talking about smart investors. And we're in what we would call primarily a seller's market. Mm, in Ottawa, yes. In Ottawa area, right? Now, when I say primarily, that's because there's still pockets that aren't. Mm -hmm. There's still types of properties that aren't. Mm -hmm. But the majority are, are selling quickly, uh, sometimes over asking, sometimes multiple offers. So the property that we we used to recommend was like a couple year old townhome, right? Because they were little little maintenance, good value to rent, and cash flow would be okay, and they were a great product. But the, that niche market's kind of gone crazy, right? It's gone up quite a bit. Yep, I have a lot of clients who were buying those with me year over year, and they were paying almost the same price. And then last year they ended up paying twenty or thirty thousand more than what they would have paid the year before, and they decided we need to do it. We need to do it now. Mm -hmm. um, and now those same units are again twenty or thirty more than what they actually paid for them. Yes. So they're getting they're getting up there. Okay. So I think what you're saying is in a in a seller's market, as long as you can get in, you you may. Th think you're paying over market for a property, but what you're doing is you're leading the market and the market's going to continue to increase. Now, we can't guarantee that, right. but typically a seller's market in the Ottawa area, from my experience, lasts for two to three years, mm -hmm. minimum. And when we're talking about your experience, we're talking about 25 years of data. We're not talking about a year or two. We're talking about a long <laughs> stretch, yes. just so... Yes. Yeah. And, and the reason for that is it's all based on supply and demand. So unless something s significantly kills the demand, right now the demand far outweighs the inventory. So the inventory has been dropping for the last three years and the demand started to come up. Now what we're finding is there's actually fewer sales this year so far because there's less homes to purchase. Mm -hmm. Now, so we're talking about smart investors. So what's the first thing a smart investor does? <laughs> I believe it's they get a strategy. So they come in for a consultation. You could have taken that so many ways. Yes. You got a strategy. You got to get educated. You got to know you want to invest. Yes. Keep going. Yeah. So find out why you want to invest is a big step. And then time frame that you're going to invest in what time you're gonna maybe cash out, if you're gonna cash out. Is it a retirement strategy? Is it a strategy to uh, create some wealth so that you can put your children through university debt-free? What's the strategy? Um, the area, the type of property, cash flow or capital appreciation, mm -hmm. or both? That's something I've been dealing with in my own portfolio is trying to figure out the balance of those two and how much I wanted in cash flow and how much I wanted in equity increase. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of people that have high income levels right now, they may sacrifice cash flow because for capital appreciation because capital appreciation puts your, your income into the future where you don't pay tax on it until you pull it out and then it's got preferential tax treatment. Mm -hmm. Whereas cash flow adds to your income every year, the year it's in, and so you pay more tax typically. Yeah. yeah. So looking at that, looking at whether you're going to self-manage or have a manager, property manager. And when I talked about area, of course, we specialize in the 
Ottawa area and surrounding area. We do go out to the smaller cities uh, or towns so that we can find properties that have higher cash flow and maybe a little less capital appreciation. So I think they pronounce it REN. It's R-E-I-N, the real estate, real estate investor network. It's a Canadian network of, it's kind of like an investing club. And they did a study of 36 economic factors that across the board, they know that those factors affect the future of real estate prices. Because it's like number of jobs, amount of income, the, um, the average income of a family, how expensive the properties are in comparison to that average income, what the rental rates are, what the rental vacancies are. And a total of 36 things they, they test and they project out over a five year span. They said, what are the top 10 cities in Ontario for investing in real estate? And guess where we came out in Ottawa? Number one. Number one. Number one. Number one. So that's awesome. Like we're way ahead of Toronto. I think Toronto was like seventh or something like that. Because probably a lot of the economic factors are that Toronto's already increased a lot and Ottawa hasn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So understanding, the second thing smart investors understand is that it's okay to buy in a seller's market. So what are the, some of the things... Why, why do it in a seller's market? You just gave one example where they were buying in a seller's market where they had to pay, they were in more. multiple offers. Yep. They paid over asking for a property. I would say even more, more than the um, value of the property. At the time. At the time. Because that's the only way they could get in. Okay. They knew someone was going to pay more than value mm -hmm. and they wanted it to be them. So is it really more than value? Because right. the buyers set the value. And now... Nine months later, right? Nine months later, the value's gone up probably another 10%, mm -hmm. which is another 30 grand. Mm -hmm. So it was a good decision. It was a great in. decision. Right. Okay. What happens to rent prices when there's, a, when there's a, a lack of houses to buy and prices are increasing? Mm -hmm. What also is there a lack of? It's not in, mutually exclusive. And mm -hmm. often uh, there's less rental or rentals as well okay. because the same factors that have stopped people from having enough houses to buy is usually the same factors that stopping enough houses to rent right and it's typically increase in population people moving into the area and that causes demand to be higher than supply so rental prices typically go up and so that townhouse that we were typically selling that would rent at 15 1550 what are they renting at now? Now sixteen fifty, sometimes seventeen hundred. Yeah, so six. So that's a significant increase, right? Mm -hmm. So although you're paying more, you're also cash flowing more. So it should cover your mortgage or close to. You mean mortgage. it's bringing in more gross net, right? Not necessarily. Not more necessarily cash, cash flow. flow, right? It's bringing more cash to pay the extra mortgage. Yes. So you just need a little more down payment. But the other good thing is, typically in this market, you're capturing where we're having the, you know, Ottawa has a, an appreciation of typically around four, four and a half percent if we average it out other 10 or 20 years. It's about four or four and a half percent. So what you're doing is you're getting into a buyer, a seller's market. You're actually capturing some of the period where it's increasing faster, whether it be seven or 10 percent, right? Mm -hmm. Then multiply that by the fact that you're only putting 20% down, so that means it's going up at a five times factor. So if it goes up 10% and you only put 20% down, what's, how much is that? That would be five times factor, 50%. 50% growth on your down payment in one year. Now we can't guarantee that. But that's what's happening right now. And that's the prices. power of leverage. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if we're going to get too far into that today, but <laughs> it's, uh, that's definitely something smart investors use is other people's money, other right. people's knowledge. And so when you're using other people's money with your amount of money, you, could, you can make a lot more. Mm. And there are risks, there are things to mitigate, 
And it's uh, often a strong piece of the uh, reason why real estate investing is so strong. Right. So you're investing sixty or $100,000 and you're buying an asset that's four hundred to five hundred thousand dollars so your growth is on a much bigger number than your actual investment and historically real estate's fairly safe so it's a great place to put in a hundred thousand dollars and i think we're also seeing more foreign investment in ottawa we're starting to yeah yeah and i think uh, some of that has to do with vancouver and toronto which were the big areas that investors wanted to yeah they were big hubs they started putting extra tax on for people who weren't local or people that were not going to actually live in the property. And I think um, a lot of people are getting disillusioned with those markets as well with how high the price point is. Okay. So you could get the same property here in a similar uh, closeness to downtown for a third of the price. Ooh. And so it becomes, well, do I want to spend a million or do I want to spend... You know, 300 and whatever thousand. Right. So a million dollar townhome compared to a 350 townhome here. Right. Or a million two for a 350 here. <laughs> like it's, it's three times. It's, it's pretty crazy. Yes. I wonder what they rent for. But that's not our market. I, I do know that answer and the cash flow is worse than Ottawa. Right. And I think that's why the Real Estate Investment Network says Ottawa is like the number one buy right now for the next five years. Now, Ottawa also has a couple other things going for it. It's almost consistently ranked in the top three cities to live in as far as traffic and entertainment and um, cleanliness and green space and uh, jobs and all of that. It's ranked in the top three in Canada. And then Canada is quite often in the top five countries in the world that people want to live. So people want to come here. And they want to buy here because our government's pretty stable. Our banking's super stable. So people that live in countries where they have a lot of money and those things are unstable, the, the banking, the, the, uh, the government, they're afraid to lose their, their stuff. They're, so they would rather go take their money to Canada and buy a property with it. Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool. So what other things would a smart investor do in this market where it's a seller's market? I want to move back a little bit. Oh, okay. One of the things they would do is... Back up the bus. Is is understand. (laughs) Is understand what they're investing in. Okay. Um, Because if you don't understand what you're investing in, that's when you can get into trouble. And so before investing in a seller's market... You should understand real estate. And a lot of us own homes already. And if you don't, you've lived in a home at some point. So you're starting to understand the, uh, the structure of a house and how it's a physical thing. Um, but getting more knowledge and seeking out different sources. And so if you want to have some other sources, you can email into us and we'll give you some of these sources that we use and also uh, give out. So okay. where do we want them to email us? Info at DeckerTeam.com. That's I-N-F-O at Decker Team, D-E-K-K-E-R-T-E-A-M dot com. So now let's give you some more information. So back on track. Okay. Um, why a seller's market? Why, why would you want to buy in that? Well, we said they're going up. Right. They're going up. And you can still, find, going you can still find some relatively great, what I call bargains mm-hmm. in a seller's market. And you do that by looking for the ugly duckling. Mm -hmm. Because all the buyers that are buying for themselves typically want the one they can walk into. It's nicely decorated. It's nicely painted. It's in good condition. They don't have to sink a lot of money into it. Mm -hmm. It's ready to go. Now, for an investor, the problem is that creates a high demand for that type of property. So investors want to go to a property that maybe someone smoked in. Or maybe the carpet's worn out, or it's got old fixtures, or the appliances are ugly. Or they got some pets. Or they got pets. Maybe it's pet smell. Yes. Because you can go in, revitalize a property, you instantly increase the value of it, Mm -hmm. and it's very rentable again now that you've upgraded it. 
So they, a smart investor, improves and holds. Because mm -hmm. that brings us into our next one. Sometimes in, in real estate investors uh, want some money or need some money. And with real estate, you don't have to sell it to get some money. Right. Right? So you can refinance it. Yeah, you can re-leverage. So you keep the property, you keep twenty at least 20% in, and then you take your equity, the rest of the equity out, and you go buy another one, another property. And that way you're getting to use your funds without having to liquidate, because there's cost to liquidating. Big cost. And so if you can keep now two properties growing, you're basically doubling your rate of return mm -hmm. than where you were at for the same amount of money. Yes, yeah, so that's if you're buying another property with it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we even recommend buy your investment property, you know, when your children are two and three and five, like kind of your age of children, right? Now, when they go to university, and what would that be? When are your kids going to university? 12 years or so? Are they geniuses? Maybe uh, eight oh, years? <laughs> oh, they're geniuses. That's right. <laughs> they might be in university at 12. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but when they go to university, whatever time yeah. it is, if the real estate's gone up significantly, you can actually refinance your real estate. Now, you may not take that 60 or 80 or 100 grand out and actually buy another piece of real estate right. with it. You may buy your child's education. And that's why we were saying in the beginning, it's so important to know why you're doing this. Because you don't want to get into a property or into um, an investment strategy that's not going to achieve your goals. Then right. what's the point? You know, people say real estate investing, some people say, can be a hassle. I mean, well, it's not a hassle if it's giving you your dreams. You know, <laughs> like, I'm okay to, you know, talk to my tenant once a month to collect rent if I know it's paying for my kid's schooling. Like, it's, it's a different conversation. I have tenants that run over and drop off checks for That's me. That's awesome. Like <laughs> Most of mine email it, which I like. <laughs> they email the money, right? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So we learned something actually when I was in um, California a couple months back from uh, Gary Keller. And Gary Keller is actually the founder of Keller Williams. Mm -hmm. And Gary Keller is uh, ranked rather wealthy, he's, he's ranked as a billionaire. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how much money is a billion, but yeah, it's, it's, a billion. it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, but I know it's a billion, but can you conceptualize it? Can you see it? Can you see what you could do with a billion no. dollars? It's outside of my scope of, well, of wealth at the moment, right? It's an out, outside of my scope of understanding. And yet, a guy like that, you would think he's pretty wise if he's been able to amass a billion dollars in assets. In his lifetime. In his lifetime. Yeah. And he's not that old. He's, I think he's about my age, maybe a little bit more. So then you go, okay, what did he do? And he said, what most people do is they have a problem because they have to visit their money. And every time they visit their money, they lose money. So in other words, if you take your money out of one investment and put it in another investment, it probably costs you fees, either to sell, fees to buy, and also quite often, unless it's under an umbrella like a TFSA or, a, or RRSP, you've paid taxes when you've moved it from one asset to another asset. So when they come to visit their money, they actually lose money. Mm -hmm. But with a house, you can actually visit the house and not visit the money. And if you do need to visit some money, like I said, for, for an, another investment or for an emergency, a healthcare issue or whatever, you can visit some money out of the property without a tax implication. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. That's very cool. I like real estate. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> okay. uh, is that a jingle you picked up? Or you I, think, I think we're going to create a little jingle. I'm not very musical. So if someone out there is listening and, they're, and they say, hey, you know, you're putting up your hand, put up your hand if you are musical and you could write me a little jingle. Uh, maybe we'd even compensate depending on how good the jingle is. That would be fun. Hey, let's start a little competition. Who can create a, I like real estate. Notice I didn't say love because the love of money, the love of assets is not not biblical. So 
I like it. And it's biblical. Even the Proverbs 31 woman, right? What'd she do? She went out and bought land. She considered a vineyard and bought it. And when, she, when you say considered, that means she looked at the financial implications and whether that vineyard would pay a dividend back and whether it would increase in value. She was a wise woman, that Proverbs 31. She was a real estate investor. <laughs> so what other ways can a smart investor find great properties that are about to increase but maybe haven't yet? Um, so how do they find it or what are they? Well, yeah, both. That's oh, good. Well, yeah. how you'd find well, we don't want to give away all the secrets. The we don't want to give away all the <laughs> secret sauce because then they don't need us, right? Well, <laughs> I think they still need us. I do too. Yeah. Um, yeah. You can only give so much secret sauce, but you still need yeah. the sauce. Yes. So, okay. So for me, one of the areas is condos. So why, why has that happened? Because I thought condos, there was too many of them. They weren't going up in value. So why now are we saying condos are a great place to put your money? Okay. Well, first of all, the condo inventory has been coming down slowly as well. Mm -hmm. Not quite as fast as the freehold inventory. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the freehold properties have increased in value significantly mm -hmm. to the point where the, some of the condominiums that haven't increased in, pro, in value are now looking like a bargain. Right. Even with the condo fee, mm -hmm. right? And if it's in your strategy to buy condos, then this might be a good time to buy condos because condos, the nice thing is, there's no, typically, there's no exterior maintenance. You don't have to worry about all that kind of stuff. You don't have to worry about shoveling snow if you don't have a tenant or your tenant's away or your tenant decides he doesn't want to cut the grass or whatever the case may be. Um, a condo that that side of the problems all disappear so for a lot of people condo is a great investment because of that strategy and the rents are still going up so although the condo market hasn't gone up yet the rents have the rents have so the cash flow becomes more attractive in condos than they have in a long time yep like i've rented the same two-bedroom condo in barhaven now it's not the exact same one i've so i've rented multiple models of the exact same <laughs> unit just in a different building or down the street and i've rented pretty much every three months and pretty much every three months i can increase the rent by fifty dollars a month for the next tenant and the interesting thing is those people all paid the same amount of money because they all bought their condo at the same time and so you know 50 bucks doesn't sound like a lot but that's 600 a year mm -hmm. or if it's been six months that's you know 1200 a year and that really starts to add up, not just for cash flow, but um, yes. also the pay down ability of the, the house. So, t so if, you're, if you've got an existing tenant for 2018, I believe it's 1.8% is the allowable price increase in a year's span. Now, what a lot of landlords used to hate was if their tenant moved out because then they go, oh, I got the cost of finding another tenant and right, so on and so forth. The beauty is right now, if your tenant moves out, you're probably going to do a 5 or 10% rent increase mm -hmm. as opposed to 1.8. So it pays you for your tenant to leave. Now, that doesn't mean you can be mean to your tenant. That's not what I'm saying, right? You got to love on your tenant because they're paying down your mortgage. Yeah. Treat them well. Yeah. Your tenants are gold. They're, yeah. Yeah. Now, also look for things that are changing. Like, is the transit changing? You know, like we've got this O train thing that's going to happen probably at the end of 2018. They say, I think they say they're on time. Do they say they're on time? Uh, we'll I think they out. say they are. So if, if it runs, then guess what happens? Now, some of it's already happened. The prices have already increased in the locations around where the stations are, where people can get on and off of the train. And that will continue those areas will continue and transition. Now also, you can look for places that maybe had a poor reputation, but now they're transitioning, or they're on the edge of another area that's very expensive, and, it, and that area is kind of saturated, so they're starting to spill out street by street closer to the poorer area and driving prices up. You can also look for properties that are close to major developments, like Hard Rock is gonna spend half a billion dollars 
or 600 million or something like that, a lot of money. And they're building a hotel and casino and all of that near Greeley, and it's going to create hundreds of jobs. Mm -hmm. Do you think hundreds of jobs coming into an area actually could affect Absolutely. the demand for property around that? Absolutely. Yeah, sure. And you just happen to own a couple of properties? In or, that area. Or one, one anyways, with three, multiple three units, units yeah. multiple units in that area which is Kinda kudos awesome. to you good thinking man wow. <laughs> was, uh, we always say buy real estate and wait yes and so i mean that's the same here right like i didn't know that was going to happen when i bought it four years ago and yet when you buy and wait those kind of opportunities do come up over time mm -hmm. and here's one of the things that smart investors do they get education they get around other people that are investing mm -hmm. They get around experts in the industry and listen and learn. So if you're wanting to invest, go find three people who've invested, one property, two properties, 10 properties, I don't care, and ask them, what was the number one thing you're glad you did about investing? And what's the number one thing you would have changed if you can start again? And start collecting those answers. And the reason you do that is to learn, but learn from their highs and their lows. That's wise. That's very wow. wise, man. Thanks. Chip off the old block. Yeah, I thought you'd say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that being said, yeah, go, go find three people and go find out from them their experience, high and low. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you might also want to come to our millionaire workshop Ooh. where we are in the process of helping. Our goal is to help 100 people become millionaires through investing in real estate and all you gotta do is email us info at deckerteam.com again email us and we will let you know when our next available date is awesome because we don't want you to miss out it's it's uh, typically it's 27 dollars you get a free copy of the wealth formula book and you get to learn from industry experts on what to invest in, how to invest, how to mortgage them, what's the best way. We have uh, Kelly Wilson from the Invest team coming to help us with the with the mortgage side of things. So if you want some more information on being a smart investor, come on out to the Millionaire Investor Workshop. And you can do that by connecting with info at decorateam.com. Just